and welcome into the Cardinals franchise. Unfortunately, last episode, we dropped a game against the Denver Broncos after finally getting first place in the NFC. We then dropped back down to the second seed, so not as awful as what happened to the Eagles, who were first and dropped to fifth. But we don't have an easy game today. Coach, you're tasked with facing the Buccaneers and their high-powered offense this week. Where does stopping them start? I think constant pressure. But the problem, I, I would say constant pressure, I should say that way. Because Tom Brady doesn't throw the ball too far downfield anymore, but he's really quick to get that ball out. He's a smart guy. So I think we have to find ways to force some turnovers. You have to force turnovers and take the ball away. It either helps keep points off the board for them, gives you a chance to score yourself, or both. When that happens, winning is a lot easier. Beat the Buccaneers and force two-plus turnovers. We might need more with how often we've been turning the ball over, but two, solid goal. Kickoff is here. Bucks will kick it off to start the game. Dorch back to receive, and he'll call fair catch. We'll be starting the day at the 25. And this defense looks stacked. We could already see Shaq Barrett, Vita Vea, and Levante David, all guys with at least star or superstar dev, already getting pass rush on the first play. Going to roll out here and intercept it. First play. All right, Winfield Jr., all right. We had a wide open, I think it was our running back, it was wide open underneath. But again, as soon as they go to throw it, turns the run downfield, picked off. <laughs> so it seems like whatever you do in Madden 23, you're going to have a lot of turnovers. That's just the way the game has been designed, whether you turn down the slider or not. Granted, we haven't done that for this version, but in the Ohio only challenge that we're doing, we still see quite a bit of turnovers. So hopefully after this season, we will make the same adjustment to the interception and uh, intentional grounding slider. And a nice route ran there and almost picked off by a Dory Jackson. Had a good play made by some of our DBs to break that one up. It was almost a really good grab there on second down. Instead, they'll go across the middle, caught this time. Godwin, but not for the first down. Only nine yards, fourth and one at the 27. And Tampa Bay is lining up to go for it, which means I'm going to bring down Buda Baker here in case they go with a four net run. And they don't. Is a pass complete. 87 for the first down. Is that Howard? Is he still with them? No, that was Jared Cook. Where does Howard play? I honestly can't remember. I'm pretty sure he, he changed teams, but I just don't remember who he plays for now. Nice tackle there from Gardick, stopping Fournette for a gain of two. Bringing up second and eight. Bunch to the right-hand side. Shotgun set. Evans to that left-hand side. Will be a run to Fournette down the middle. And Zayvon Collins picks him up and puts him down. Only a gain of three there as they come out again with that bunch shotgun set. Same side with the bunch. Fournette in the backfield. Gardick gets bumped off of his uh, blitz. And that's another first down for Cook. This time down to the seven. I would say a uh, slow, methodical drive down the field, but... They really didn't have to drive down the field. Already started in pretty good field position. Fournette down the middle, and he'll power down to the two. On second and goal, they'll line up in shotgun. Two tight receivers to the right. Evans tight-ish to the left-hand side. It'll be a run down the middle. Fournette with open running room. The pulling guard didn't even have to touch anybody. And the Buccaneers take an early lead, capitalizing off the INT. And that first drive for us did not go very well. One play interception. Let's see if we could have something at least a little bit better to start this possession. And how about a first down on the screen pass? Derek Young also kind of juked someone out there. A little help there as well from the linebacker to help us get by that juked guy. But I'll take it for Young. 
If you're new here and haven't uh, watched this series from the beginning, one, you should go ahead and subscribe. But two, uh, Derek Young is actually a former receiver turned running back as we are much of an air raid team. And the running backs on roster, at least at the beginning of this season, didn't really match the uh, scheme that we were running. So we went out and we actually found a, I'm pretty sure he was an undrafted rookie receiver, maybe a practice squad receiver. And we turned him to a running back. And he's done pretty well for us so far. Just need to work on his agility, his ability to get by people in open field. That's been the only problem. Murray here going to try to at least get as close to the line of scrimmage as he can. Shaq Barrett in with a sack loss of five. So on second and 15, let's try to get to the outside here. Jet sweep with Rondale Moore in his 95 speed. I believe 94 acceleration. We had blockers out in front. Wasn't able to quite use it. Barely stays in bounds. We'll get about a gain of 10. Bringing up third and five. So we'll come out same formation, flip the sides, and A.J. Green comes in at that slot spot. Trying to find someone. Green does have the advantage. Kind of gets the defender bumped off the route. Green will get us down to the red zone. At the 20, we'll come out empty set. Going to try to run the wide receiver screen here. Although they ran that play very well, and D-Hop not able to hold on to it. So on second and ten, we'll come out shotgun. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Defense comes out in the double A gap, but we'll drop out of it. We'll check underneath here, find more, try to fight for the first down, and we'll get it. Bit of favorable call there, but I'm not going to complain about it. We need to get a touchdown here to tie this game up as we come close to the end of the first quarter, and there's a Derek Young rushing touchdown. I feel like that might be the first of the season for him. At least off the top of my head. I don't remember too many touchdowns for him, and I definitely don't remember a rushing touchdown, but it just opened up. Good blocking up front, and there was no one on that backside, and Winfield Jr., who had the INT, couldn't get over for the stop. And now let's see if our defense can actually put together a solid drive here, stopping the offensive drive at least, now that they're not starting already in their own territory. Will be a late pass. Will be almost, actually. Almost caught. Buda Baker breaks that one up. Once again, intended for their tight end in Jared Cook. At least I'm assuming it's Jared Cook. When it pops up, it says Jay Cook. So that's the only one I could think of. And we have incoming rush. Kingsley Kiki was going to get to Tom Brady. Surprised Kiki's not being arrested there after <laughs> hitting Tom Brady in the kneecap. But... We'll take it, third and 22, third and long. Let's back off the defense here. Give us a little bit of some uh, ample coverage space. They'll go with a pass across the middle and we'll be stopped. We still gave up quite a lot of yardage, about 17 yards on that play, but we'll bring up a fourth and five to start the second quarter. On first down, they're coming out with a double A gap look. They back out of it. We might have Ertz open, no, instead, we're going to have a big old run here for Mostert with that speed headed down the middle and he's weaving in between the defenders and that is another gigantic rushing touchdown. I believe he had one, if, I believe it was last week, maybe the week before, but Mostert, one play to the house. He ran that RPO, they bit on the pass and it was pure speed to the end zone. And just like that, kind of the whole momentum flipped here. It's now Tampa Bay who's trailing and Trying to find something to get themselves going. First drive wasn't great, but delayed pass here. Will find Fournette for the first down. Solid gain of about 15 yards. Big hit came in from Zaven Collins. Fournette holds on to it. And still trying to tee up some pressure here. We obviously got the big hit on Ki or with Kiki. The uh, last drive. Gardick off the edge here. Will hit Tom Brady. Nice pass break up there from Adori. Now bring up a second and 10 as they come out. Trips to the left. One lone receiver to the right, I believe, was Mike Evans. Looks like it's going to be a draw play. Indeed it is. We're going to need Thompson to come down and get the tackle after about a gain of six, bringing up third and four. And on third and four, we're going to try to bring Buda Baker on a blitz here. Lone, no, they actually have someone waiting for him. And Kingsley, not Kingsley Kiki, that was Tim Settle on coverage. They will bring down Godwin after the first down gain. Now moving just past midfield, Tom Brady has his X Factor activated. We'll see what that means for us. I'm assuming just dead eye passes. Now they'll come out under center. 
Two tight ends, two receivers. Tight formation here. Send a bit of a blitz. Zayvon Collins is in on Tom Brady. I told you earlier we're going to need to get sacks, but I think the key will be turnovers. Now, despite Tom Brady having that uh, really nice rush, at least at this point, I think it would be about two, maybe three weeks ago by the time this comes out, he's not a very mobile guy. So I think if we can not allow them to find a wide open receiver 20 some odd yards downfield after not having a pass rush, we'll be doing pretty well, but uh, not the case here. Gage Jr. gets him to the 21. Only brought four on that last play, and well, that's what we get. Good blocking up front gives Brady time, and he'll find a guy for a big chunk. Get a decent stop there. And Fournette really not moving the ball all too much so far. Make an audible here. Come down to that double A gap. Nice job from Simmons to get by the blocker, but didn't react in time to get Fournette. But we will eventually bring him down after a short gain, bringing up third and four at the 15. Looks like the uh, second running back checks in here for the Bucks. They're going to go underneath. Simmons read that play, and I overran the play. Did not see Gage stop. Good job from the receiver. We'll give them another first down. And I didn't mean to call Engage 8, but they're coming out goal line, so why not? Let's Engage 8 here. See if we could get in there, be run down the middle, and somehow both the, I think, linebacker and safety whiffed on the fullback, and they are in, tying this game up with a made PAT at least, with about three minutes left in the half. And following a solid return there from Dorch, our offense will start at the 31, just shy of three minutes to get down the field. Nice broken tackle there on, I believe it was Shaq Barrett, maybe Akeem Hicks. Either way, we get forward for a gain of three there on the rush from Young. Try to set up the screen pass once again. Try to get some blockers out in front. We definitely have one blocker. Chops out the defender. And we'll get forward out of bounds at the 45, stopping the clock. Now empty set here. Only three DBs, including one of their linebackers to that right-hand side, which means we should have a favorable advantage here. We don't get the block. Very well sealed on number 24, but Andy Isabella just trucks through him as we hit the two-minute warning. And they're going to bring down Winfield Jr. to that left-hand side. If he comes on a blitz, we got to hit Young over the top, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We need a good block there from Hopkins, who holds it long enough, and Young will get down and out of bounds at the 22. We have plenty of time. Might need to start draining some of this time. So let's do just that. Chew clock on. We want to get a touchdown on the board, but don't want to leave really any time here for the Bucks. Go with Mostert down the middle, and he will power through another first down, down to the 10. Now with this clock ticking close to a minute here, going to run a little bit of read option. Mostert in the backfield, but we're going to keep it, although they read it very well, but Murray with the speed. I'm going to take the touchdown. Left him a minute left on, on the clock. Left him, wow. Left a minute on the clock for him, but you got to take the touchdown when it's there. That's pure speed from Kyler Murray gets the edge and we'll take another lead 21-14 as you see here just Hakeem Hicks in pursuit and number 45 comes up just shy and now our defense will have a minute and seven seconds to stop the Buccaneers from getting any points on the board would really be nice they'll start with a pass and they will find it Gardick almost jumped underneath it but he'll get the, the stop and we will Get a timeout from the Bucks. So just again, a little bit over a minute left. They get two yards on the first pass, so not much of a difference. And underneath, just again about a step behind, they'll find their other tight end, number 88, and another timeout. They'll bring up a third and two. 57 seconds left. Collins, man up on Gage. I don't think that's a favorable uh, play here for us, but or match up. Wow. And a flag down. We missed a sack, and then Tom Brady threw out of a sack. And a holding. Do we give him another chance, or do we say fourth and two? I doubt they go for it here, so fourth and two. And with 42 seconds left before halftime here, let's see if we could get Hopkins around the edge. He's still got some speed, but... Oh, nice spin move there! We'll call one of our timeouts. We got all three. Why not? 
36 seconds left. Would love to at least get into field goal range. Coming out with four receivers to one hand side. Going to have Ertz wide open. Accurately thrown ball. This might be six. They're closing in. But Ertz has just enough speed. And we are taking a solid lead here into halftime. With a Ertz a long touchdown. I, I don't know the yardage. It looks like thrown from around the 36. So do that math yourself. It's just a long touchdown. That's all that matters to me. For what was a close game, what, about two minutes ago? Completely different now as we have double the amount of points that the Buccaneers have. But they're going to find Godwin here down to the 45. They still have one timeout. They will elect to waste half the time and then call it. So now we can expect them to try to throw to the outside here. At least you would think that that's what they would do. They will pass the ball, but across the middle. Caught by Evans, tackled inbounds with four seconds left. No way to stop it. We'll head into half with a 28-14 lead. And it's definitely nice to see this offense moving well. It's been iffy at points. We still are losing in the turnover department, but we have, what, four times the amount of rushing yards that they have and close to about the same passing. So definitely in our favor so far. Jacksonville here against the Jets gets the victory. 17-13. Jaguars move to 7-8 and eight on the year. Jets fall to 5-10. and 10. Heading a little bit south of there. We have the Battle of the Birds, and it's going to the Falcons. 27 to 24, both teams now six and nine on the year. Mariota outperformed Jackson. Let's get our second half underway. Kicking off will be the Cardinals Bucks returning, but they won't have that option. Out of the back of the end zone, they'll start at the 25. So what will Tom Brady do this second half? The first quarter was good for both teams. But then we really came on strong late in that second quarter and just started to dominate. But they're going to get an easy first down. And actually, they might mark it second and inches. Indeed, the refs do. For some reason, Zach Collins decided to truck the air rather than uh, lay a big hit on the receiver. But it's all fine. They'll go down the middle. And that's going to be a first down. Cut back inside and then finally caught back up is Kingsley Kiki. And with that first and with that new set of downs at the 45, come out with some man here. Not sure running man is the best thing to do against this team, as they're going to have another open receiver. This time Godwin down across midfield to the 41. I feel like we should probably stop calling man coverage right now. I don't think the majority of our team is set up for that. So let's go back to some zone here. Going to run some cover two, and they'll have some guys underneath. But we have some guys waiting. Adoree Jackson will get the quick tackle gain of three. Tom Brady back in his X-Factor, almost like he never left. Coming out with two tight or two receivers to the left-hand side. One tight end also at the line. And nice little quick juke there from Fournette. Avoids the attempted tackle. But we had a few more Cardinals waiting. Bring him down third and two. Gonna step down with Buda Baker. Will be a run down the middle. And he trips. But still gets the first down. 11 rushes, 41 yards for Frenette on the day, plus a touchdown. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to having that 3-3-5 next year. I think that would just be better for situations like this, where they're coming out with three receivers, but still very much in a run-type formation. The only thing that I think would be better is that instead with Madden, how we have the uh, left and right ends and then left and right rush ends, it really should be weak end and strong end, or weak edge and and strong edge, whatever the other edge I didn't already say. I think that would just be more realistic to what happens in the NFL, because you don't just have one player play on one side the whole time. There's maybe occasions where that happens, but for the most part, as we whiff on another tackle, for the most part, guys move around, and you really don't see that very much. But White checks in there on that last play, and he'll get a gain of eight, second and two, Blitz, Gardick off the edge, hits Tom Brady, but he finds Cook in the end zone. Bucks score here to narrow their deficit. This is definitely feeling like one of those games that we have to continue scoring, because if we don't, the Bucks will find a way to retake a lead here. Mostert 
had the space. And he's still not down. And we had to wait for about eight different Buck defenders to just lay on top of him. But I have the feeling that if we don't score, the Bucks will find a way to not only tie the game, but then just come roaring back. So we need to make sure we continue to put some points on the board. Nice catch there from Rondell Moore with a little juke move. Gets past Ryan crossing midfield to the 45. And we really do need to be giving Rondell Moore some credit. To start the year, he was rough. He was dropping a lot of passes and became somewhat of a liability. But he's definitely come on strong of recent. So got to give him some credit there. We're going to come out here, though, with the pistol. Going to go again with that read option. Although they read that option pretty well. Mostert will get forward for a short gain. And on third and seven, I'm looking maybe Hopkins' way. Actually, I'm going to send Brown on a bit of an in route. Create a bit more of some levels action here. And they do a great job on the levels action. Read that perfectly. Shaq Barrett in for his second sack. And we're going to have to punt this one away. And following a great punt from Andy Lee, Bucks will start their drive at the 8. So we're going to send a bit of a blitz here. They go with a run down the middle. Actually stretched more to the outside. I don't know if it was meant to or if he cut out there. But Vaughn, get out there. Get a gain of 1. Check that gain of 2. So we've seen three different running backs out here for the Bucks, And we're... I think that's White back in, if I remember correctly. He'll get forward for about a gain of five, making it third and three as we end the third quarter. Fourth quarter starts with this game 28-21. We're in front, but the Bucks have possession. And on third and three, they'll come out with two receivers to the left, one to the right. Under center, Tom Brady will be a pass, and we were a half step away from either sacking Brady or slapping that ball in his face. But instead, Cook with another vital first down. He's been probably their most clutch player today outside of Brady. So far, seeing a heavy dose of white this round. Hopefully, uh, Fournette didn't get shaken up. It'll be a run down the middle. Big hit there from Collins, picked up by Simmons. And that, we're going to take over. I don't think I said fumble. There was a fumble. Collins with a big hit forced the fumble on white or white fumbled with the bit either way we have the ball in the red zone on first down we're gonna go with a bit of play action and looks like they covered all of that pretty well not seeing much here to toss this one away good job from the bucks defense and they're very much stacking that uh, right hand side so Let's go for a rush to the left-hand side. Try to take advantage of a weaker side. Mostert for his second rushing touchdown is in. Winfield just a step behind. And we'll widen our lead once again to a two-score lead. And I did say earlier turnovers would be key for us getting a victory. And that might just have been that key right there. They had the possession with... A score would have tied the game. We forced the fumble, and now we widen our lead and we miss a sack. <laughs> I think Kennard has whiffed on a couple tackles for a loss. But this will most likely be Kennard's last season here with us as we'll be switching over to the 3-3-5. We won't need four to six different edge rushers. We'll only need two to three max. So try to get younger there. Kennard will be, I believe, 32 after the season. Jared Cook, though, gets another first down. And I definitely called the wrong formation here. But it'll work as they go to twins on either side. And then they hear me say that. And then they go back to trips on one side. So we'll see what we can do here. Going to run some cover two action. And just, I don't know if you saw it, but Godwin completely crossed our safety. Luckily, though, Tom Brady didn't see it. Instead, they'll get a gain of just a three on the check down. On second and seven. Trips to that right-hand side still. And they're kind of killing their own time. Quick pass Godwin, who gets smacked. Ball out. Picked up Kingsley Kiki. Will that stand, though? I don't know if Godwin was down when that ball came loose. Had the quick pass. Definitely had a football move. Big hit came in from Isaiah Simmons. And I think that ball was free. And no booth review. So there is for sure our second turnover meeting. What uh, we were asked to do, Mostert trying to get to the edge here. 
Tried to cut back in to get some help from some linemen. Get a gain of two. Six carries, 106 yards, two touchdowns on the day. Not too bad for Mostert, who's definitely become a bit more of like a feat. Uh, not feature like the number one, but features in like music, where he's not the main guy, but he's coming in and throwing together a good verse. But I think uh, we have a very similar style running back here with Derek Young. Not the same level of ability in the open field, but plenty of talent to get there as we miss Ertz here. On second and ten, we'll come out with our RPO here. Whether we stay inside or go to the outside, going to depend on how they interact. And they don't interact the way that they should have. Young with another catch, about another 13, 14 yards with a first down to the 12. And while we're at it, let's get a young running back out here. Eno Benjamin checks in in the pistol formation. He'll get the handoff down the middle. Maybe should have uh, kept that one more gap inside, but not too bad. And I'm going to switch the play here. Keep an eye on this left-hand side. I would prefer to hand the ball off, but they read, read option and good play there made by number 45, Devin White. I'm pretty sure it's Devin White. That'll bring up a third and 13, and I'm going to come out here with a play-action rollout. See what we can get, and there's not much. Throw this one away. Flag comes down late. I think that's going to be a... Uh, exactly what I was thinking. We'll take it. Roughing the passer. Giving us a free first down at the seven. Basically the nail in the coffin pretty much for the Bucks this game. Vita Vea will get the stop after a gain of two. And on second and goal. Let's see how the screen works down here. We also have Hopkins on the left-hand side that we can't forget about. And they read that very well, but Hopkins breaks open late. And we're just going to add a little bit of, uh, a little bit extra on top. Not needed, but we're going to do it. And the Buccaneers will have two minutes 27 seconds to try to double their points without giving up any more on defense just to tie this game. So it doesn't look favorable. And as I had said before, turnovers would be key. And that's the big separator here. We've had our own turnover on offense, but we've been able to get some turnovers on defense when they were much needed as we hit the two-minute warning. Pretty much now everything that happens will just be stat padding. Tom Brady, somehow down 21 points, still has his X-Factor ability. He'll find a quick first down to the running back on the angle route. And it seems like that's all they're waiting for right now is just check downs. Curl route complete to Gage. Tackle comes in from Buda Baker. And they'll go with another check down to the outside. Buda Baker with another hit. But he was tackled down inbound, so... We'll keep, we'll keep the clock rolling. We're in a, a little bit of interior rush here with Kingsley, but not getting anywhere. Godwin with the catch at the 35. I mean, the Buccaneers are moving the ball. I'll, I'll give them that. It's just a little bit too late here. Gardick trying to get off the block, but nowhere close. I don't even think he got past the line of scrimmage. And they'll call their first timeout. 31 seconds left on the clock, second and eight at the 33. Tom Brady with a snap, rush very slowly coming in, but there's another fumble picked up this time by number 21. I believe that was Vaughn, the third string running back. As he exits, White comes back out. And they will go with another pass to Cook, and I don't know, no, incomplete. I'll say I have no idea what happened on that play. I didn't even see where the ball was. So we'll send a blitz here on fourth and 24. Collins trying to fight his way in there. Jackson breaks this one up. It hits the turf. We'll have a quick knee, but this game is done. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals with a big win here today. And there's no timeout being called. So that is it. Cardinals get a huge victory, 21-point victory. And at one point, close to the end of the first half, it was a tie game, 14-14. And then someone lit a fire under the Cardinals, and there was no looking back. As the team heads out victorious, take a quick look at the stats, and 
We had the exact two turnovers we needed, just shy of 200 passing yards, but a very even game with rushing. We had some huge long rushes today, the longest of the season for sure, and that was probably the most balanced this team has looked. Coach, you preached about the need to force turnovers to stop an offense of this caliber. How crucial was that in today's win? It's huge. I don't have the exact stat, but teams that create a lot of turnovers are more likely to win games. They're huge in shifting momentum and changing games, which you saw today. Plus five hit power for the next two games for all linebackers. Plus all defensive backs will have plus five catching as well for the next two games. And then might as well just a little sugar on top, plus five morale for all defensive players. And that is exactly what we saw happen. And that end of the second quarter with like two or so minutes left, forced the fumble, grew the lead, and then from there, we just took off doing that same thing, keeping the Buccaneers at bay the whole game while slowly building that lead. And even with that win today, we are still sitting second in the NFC with the Giants with having that first seed current slated by. Still also slated to play the Cowboys in the wild card. The rest of the NFC doesn't look like it's changed very much. And I honestly can't really remember much of what the AFC looked like. But still in second place for maybe the remainder of this season. But we have a game against the Falcons that we could definitely win. And that might maybe get us back up to that first spot. We have the San Francisco 49ers week 18. They played very well against us, or we played very poorly against them a few games back. So if we could win out, there's a chance that we end up taking the uh, lead here in the NFC just in general. Currently, the Giants have the same amount of wins as us. The Eagles also have the same amount of wins. But for some reason, we were given this out oh, because NFC East, so... I think that would be why, because there's two NFC East teams up top. The Eagles definitely beat us earlier this year. So I think it's because we've clinched our division. So either way, we're making the playoffs. It's just, what is our seed going to be? You're going to have to stick around to find out. So make sure you are subscribing if you haven't already and ticking that bell notification to be notified of when these videos go live. This Cardinals traditional series is coming to you every Monday and Thursday. If you're looking for something a little different for Madden 23, we also have a state-only challenge currently doing Ohio. At least, pretty sure we're still doing Ohio. We're in a solid season three. I don't want to spoil anything, but that season or that series ends as soon as we win a Super Bowl. We have five years to do it with a team built entirely of players from one state or sometimes a couple states if there's not a lot of schools in a particular state. So really fun. I suggest you guys check that out. There's a playlist on this channel. But until next time, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.